Would I be happier if it's a rock? Uh, simply because it doesn't pose a threat? Or would I be happier if it's alien technology? I have a hard time deciding, but as a scientist I want to figure it out. Amateur astronomers had been quietly watching a strange new arrival from deep space. 3 Atlas, the third known interstellar object that will pass through the solar system following Boris and Amua Emue, at first appeared to be just another cosmic traveler, a glowing green streak of gas and dust shedding carbon monoxide and nickel into the void. But in mid-September, everything seemed to change. The discovery came on the early morning of September 19th at AMUTC. An amateur astronomer observing from a hillside in northern Chile had been tracking the interstellar object for weeks with a powerful 40-inch telescope. His rig was directly connected to NASA's ephemeris data to guarantee accuracy in tracking three atlases' trajectory. On his computer screen, the emerald streak of the body that looked like a comet glowed steadily. Nothing unusual. But then, in a single instant, he noticed something that froze him in his tracks. Around three Atlas's glowing form, nine faint points of light appeared. They were dim but recognizable, encircling the main body in apparent lockstep. In his images, they looked like fireflies hovering around a lantern in the night. Within hours, he posted his images online to astronomy forums where initial responses were dismissive, cosmic rays, digital noise, a trick of the camera. But over the next 48 hours, the world's most powerful telescopes observed three atlas. The Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope, Chile's enormous Very Large Telescope, and Hawaii's Keck Observatory, machines designed to look for the faintest galaxies at the edge of the universe, all reported similar observations. The Nine Companions might be real. Suddenly, the count changed. Three Atlas was no longer alone. There weren't just one but ten interstellar objects traveling through our solar system. What startled astronomers even more was the apparent uniformity of these companions. Initial spectroscopy suggested that all nine shared the same speed, the same trajectory, and the same luminous green tails as three Atlas itself. Preliminary results hinted at unusual metallic formulations with a lot of nickel, cobalt, and possibly exotic alloys. While some cautioned that measurement errors might be at play, others noted that such results, if confirmed, would strongly suggest an interstellar origin. Then came the most unsettling detail. Initial thermodynamic and spectral data seemed to imply that each of these objects no larger than a city block was radiating energy equivalent to tens of gigawatts, enough, at least in principle, to power. By comparison, Earth's most advanced nuclear reactors produce only a fraction of that and require vast infrastructure weighing thousands of tons. Here were fragments of rock and ice drifting silently through the void, apparently producing orders of magnitude more energy than our largest power stations. The discovery rattled the scientific community. Supercomputers at Caltech and MIT repeatedly failed to model how such small objects could generate so much energy. Every effort to simulate the phenomenon ended in equations that refused to converge. No known combination of pressure, temperature, or plasma density explained it. If these bodies were powered by fusion, they should have been ripped apart by their own reactions. This simply isn't standard cosmic chemistry, one astrophysicist wrote in a leaked memo. Some suggested exotic fusion hybrids. Others whispered about antimatter reactions or even dark matter catalysis. All agreed this seemed to be a kind of physics far beyond anything humanity could achieve or perhaps something else entirely such as a measurement anomaly yet to be understood. Yet perhaps the most chilling detail wasn't the energy itself, it was how the objects appeared. According to Harvard astronomer Jav Loeb, the nine companions did not drift into view, break off, or gradually emerge. Instead, they appeared almost simultaneously over the course of milliseconds, too fast for any current telescope to capture in real time. For comparison, a human eye blink lasts about 300 milliseconds. Even a camera flash takes around five minutes. The companion's sudden emergence was, at least to some observers, utterly bizarre. Loby's conclusion was provocative. 
He incited what he called the Mothership Hypothesis, the idea that 3 Atlas itself might be a larger interstellar craft shedding probes as it approached the solar system. In his words, these are not random fragments, their appearance was possible deliberate. The smaller, more dense things with their higher apparent energy outputs might be scouts made to look for planets while the main body remained at a distance. His warning was stark. In the worst case, these could be autonomous drones mapping our system or extracting something valuable from it. Not all scientists agreed. Physicist Mayokaku suggested a more natural explanation. He argued that three Atlas might have collided with a massive interstellar rock, shattering into fragments that retained its speed and direction. But even Kaku acknowledged problems. Fragments should not glow with identical green tails, nor should they behave like miniature nuclear reactors. While this debate raged, another revelation threatened to overshadow it entirely. A second interstellar object, c 2 to 5 r to sw was rumored to be approaching from the opposite direction. Early trajectory reports indicated it might be significantly more massive than 3 Atlas, possibly 100 times larger and more luminous than any comet in history. Its tail was said to span more than two degrees of sky, dwarfing even the great comets of the past. To some, this was coincidence. Others were alarmed by it. UFO researchers speculated that Swan Arta might be arriving as a protector, perhaps even to shield Earth from 3i Atlas. Others feared the opposite, that Swan and 3i Atlas were part of a coordinated mission converging on the Sun for reasons unknown. Adding fuel to speculation, historians began revisiting ancient records. Chinese imperial archives from around 200 BC describe a heavenly dragon that filled the sky. Babylonian tablets speak of a splitting star that heralded great upheavals. Medieval European chronicles from around the year 1000 record a green-tailed visitor that resembled a banner. Some suggested these could point to a repeating cycle every 2,200 years of a great interstellar arrival. If so, humanity might be due for another. Yet, despite the mounting data and public fascination, official agencies remained almost entirely silent. NASA and the European Space Agency issued only the briefest of statements saying they were monitoring the situation. The White House, when pressed, released a single sentence, we are aware of the situation and monitoring it. Behind closed doors, however, the picture may be very different. Leaked memos and insider reports suggested that emergency meetings had been convened at the highest levels of defense and space agencies worldwide. The Pentagon and European Space Command normally tight-lipped about speculative threats were reportedly holding intensive briefings, drawing on intelligence from NASA, ESA, and independent observatories. Contingency planning, according to these leaks, spanned everything from reconnaissance flybys to full-scale planetary defense scenarios the kind once confined to science fiction or asteroid impact simulations. China's National Space Administration, for example, was said to have repurposed its long March 9th heavy lift rocket program, originally intended for future lunar and Mars missions. Engineers might be working on designs for a high-velocity interceptor, a craft capable of reaching 3i Atlas or its companions before they swung past the inner solar system. Whether the goal was direct interception, data gathering, or even deflection remained classified, but the urgency was unmistakable. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency reportedly revisited earlier asteroid deflection concepts, such as the shelved Don Quijote proposal. Once considered little more than a paper study, those blueprints were now being re-examined with fresh urgency. Officials were said to be studying whether small kinetic impactors or nuclear payloads could be adapted into viable interceptors with today's technology. Even in the private sector, the ripples were spreading. Both SpaceX and Blue Origin were allegedly contacted about the possibility of providing rapid launch platforms for reconnaissance probes. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and Starship systems still in testing for deep space payloads represented some of the fastest response heavy lift vehicles currently on Earth. Blue Origin's new Glenn, though unproven, 
could be pressed into service if timelines collapsed further. For these companies, the situation represented both a colossal engineering challenge and a potential watershed moment, the first true mobilization of private space flight in defense of the planet. But despite the flurry of planning, the brutal truth was that time is short. Humanity had no ready interceptors when Aumuamua flashed past in 2017, vanishing before telescopes could pivot to track it. With 3 i Atlas, astronomers thought they had a rare opportunity weeks or months of warning before its closest pass. But the sudden and explained appearance of nine additional companions collapsed that margin. Instead of one enigmatic body, the world now faced a small flotilla of energy-rich objects, each radiating signals beyond human comprehension. And as if that were not enough, Swanar to a second, far more massive interstellar visitor was expected almost simultaneously. Two unknowns converging near the sun within days of each other. For ordinary people, the spectacle has been breathtaking. Green streaks across the pre-dawn sky inspired awe, wonder, and the kind of dread that comes only when beauty and fear are inseparable. To the casual observer, they were little more than comets mysterious but harmless. Social media was flooded with images of glowing tales, poetic captions, and speculative hashtags. But for scientists, engineers, and government officials watching behind the scenes, the stakes were far greater. What are these objects? Why are they here? And what will happen when they reach perihelion? The possibilities span a dizzying range. Some wondered if Swan R2 could collide with 3 i Atlas, triggering an event visible across the solar system. Others asked whether the nine companions might remain in formation or break away, approaching Earth or the Moon. A growing chorus speculated that their energy signatures and synchronized behavior pointed to extraterrestrial technology forcing governments to confront the possibility of an intelligent presence in our cosmic neighborhood. Yet another camp argued that October might pass without incident, leaving nothing but to spectacular comets blazing across the sun's face, their mysteries unraveling only slowly in the data archives of observatories. The truth, however, is far less comforting, no one knows. The data is real, the objects are there, and their behavior does not fit within the framework we understand. Their sudden appearance defies every expectation, as though the universe itself has staged a test that humanity is only dimly prepared to face. As Harvard's Avi Loeb put it in his last press conference, the universe has finally knocked on our door. The question is, will we open it or will we hide? For now, humanity waits. Some with excitement, some with dread, and all under the silent glow of interstellar visitors blazing green across the skies above. 